have, to be fair. Good, 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 good. Rubber gloves, obviously, big one. That's the first one on the list, yeah. Sean a reprint. Today, so, so we've got loads of reprints from this set, right, in both both of the sets, just like the yeah. ropes and the switches and stuff. Yeah. They're not, not done new artworks, and it really makes me sad. They're actually complete reprints as well, because they are they have the D mark rather than the E mark. Mm. So these these don't keep them in format. Oh, okay. Well, that makes them even worse in here, then. Yes, it's literally just taking up trainer spots Space for, no, for reason. no reason. Yeah. Oh. Which sucks. That does suck. Uh, yeah, so the first set has, I think, one, two... Yeah, I think both sets have two re oh that's a third reprint there actually. Let me scroll a little bit. Probably giving someone motion sickness with how quickly I'm speeding through these cards. One, two, three. Yeah, both sets have three reprints in in the trainer category, trainer slash energy category, which sucks. And they both have another set of gloves, so it's a fourth grief. Even more grief. This <laughs> yeah. really is upsetting. But the trainers we do get, or at least one of them, I think is really good. Uh, yeah, definitely one of them. Potentially two. I've seen some interesting takes uh, on well, this. Well, yeah. I mean, there's a busted stadium. Oh, sorry. I meant the ones that we hadn't seen already. Oh, right, right. Today is reveals. Yeah. Uh... Sweet, okay, we're definitely live. Right. Uh, hopefully people are hopping in here. I haven't seen the Discord pop off yet. Pop off. We should probably wait for that. Have you spoken to Poker Beach Man about any of his... Woes? Troubles? Unfortunately, yeah. uh, I haven't yet, no. I will probably drop him a message this weekend asking if there's anything I can do to help. To be fair, props are still getting like this out for us to it's, look at today. It's crazy that the news is still his priority right now. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. I've never met someone who loves Pokemon as much as John, Dove. John does. He just, his whole life yeah. is just Pokemon. Uh, so yeah, huge props to him for still being able to provide us news. Um, hopefully, hopefully he'll get everything back up and running soon. But, in the meantime, like it's not even like this looks bad or anything. This is still very, very good. It's still, you know, giving everything, giving us everything we need. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You guys excited for the new glove cards? And I am. Okay, we've definitely got people in here. Wonderful. <laughs> How you doing, professor, professor? Yeah, I think the notification's just gone out, so we can probably Sweet. start. Alrighty, well, this morning, it was a Friday, and as usual, Japan did their big dump of the new sets. Um, we have seen a lot of the interesting cards, and we've actually talked about a lot of the interesting cards on streams here and there, but it's always with that caveat of anything could be released in the set, so take everything we say with a pinch of salt, but uh, we now have the full set, and more importantly, we now have the final set before rotation, so we actually can start kind of start looking at rotation now, which is pretty cool. Uh, I don't think we're going to for a little while because you know there's still plenty of chilling rain stuff we want to do but there's actually only one week of this set being legal that isn't rotation so I feel like probably the majority of the lists you see from us will just kick things off with rotation uh, because there's not much point in that week yeah. week or two weeks there'll be you know we'll be able to play stuff online but typically it's kind of gentlemen's agreement that everyone kind of plays rotation stuff for the <laughs> majority of the time anyway um, you'd, hope. you'd hope so yeah we can start looking at rotation and I'm sure Joe and I will start having rotation chats in the background fairly soon um, but first and foremost we need to look at these cards and work out what's good about them whether there's anything here um, so as usual we'll start with the trainers and Lucky Popsicle is I think where we're beginning today and there really is nothing to say about this card. You're joking. I really hope we get a golden one, is all I can say about this. A golden <laughs> popsicle. Um, yeah, heal 20 damage from your active, then flip a coin if heads return this card to your hand instead of discarding it. 
This is on average healing 30 damage. This is on average a potion. Um, yeah. And it's sometimes worse. And it's sometimes worse. So, so yeah, no downside max potion. Welcome. <laughs> uh, yeah, Lucky Popsicle is one of the... One of the less interesting ones. Uh, Toy Catcher is actually one of the more interesting ones, I think. Trainer. Switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with 50 HP or less with their active Pokemon. Uh, so, somewhat conditional Gust, but Gust nonetheless is interesting. I've seen a lot of people complaining on Twitter today about this card, saying it's gatekeeping one prizes. I think that is a very poor evaluation of the card, because the majority of one prizes don't have less than, less than 50 HP or are dead to everything. Um, so I think this actually is more of a card targeted to VMAX that have taken a hit and switched to the bench in panic. Uh, I think the, this being a one prize a gatekeep card is actually a really poor evaluation of the card personally. Do I do I think it will see play? Uh, probably not because boss exists and we have so many ways of drawing cards outside of boss. It's not even like you play this because you want to research at the same time. Um, but unconditional, somewhat conditional gust. Any gust in general always has to be looked at. Um, so yeah, it's definitely an interesting one. It's one of those cards that there will be one turn in the game where you could use this effect to your benefit. Mm. And you have to draw it at the perfect time. So Yeah. And that's with a deck that builds around it that hits around like 280 to be short on VMAXs right now. Yeah. Not many of those. No. So yeah, I think, like I say, I saw, I saw this. I saw a lot of people saying, one prizes are getting no love, but I actually don't think this is a very good card against one prizes in pretty much every. No. Uh, Doesn't affect them at all. Every other way. The 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 bigger gatekeep is the fact that we don't have a bench barrier, unironically. Of so, course. Yeah, yeah. Bench um, barrier is so necessary for them to survive. Format. And we know we're so not typing. We know we're not seeing it until at least November now as well. So there yeah. are gonna be at least three months of Urshifu basically uncontested. Um well contested yeah. well, contested in other ways, relevant, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It keeps it relevant in the game, definitely. Yeah. Which is I I don't I mean, I may regret saying this after three months of it, but I actually don't hate that. I don't mind these cards having a bit of time to spread their wings and really show how powerful they are um back my mareeps think about my mareeps yes your mareeps will say. suffer um we'll get to rayquaza v max and whether it is the next reshi rom but mm. you know uh great ball <laughs> great ball reprint and switch reprint are basically inconsequential for us because they retain the uh original um sort of legality uh lettering of their uh, so previous are prints. these confirmed to be the actual ones then? Yeah, they've got they the, they've got the same okay. got the same numbers. So, oh, yeah, um, true, true. so yeah, these actually don't do anything for us. These are just kind of filling space, which is really unfortunate, uh, especially as we only get like, well, the majority the, the majority of the trainers we're talking about today are actually pretty weak. This is one of the weaker trainer sets, I think, apart from apart from exactly the like dragon package. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of sucky that we get some reprints at the same time but hey ho uh, rubber gloves is another of the gloves that's never going to see play it, it does more you do more damage against lightning pokemon um yeah the like theme of it though yeah it reminds me of the, the first lore. episode yeah the lore is good there's a garbador that we're going to talk about later on that can have <clears throat> multiple pairs of gloves attached uh so keep that in mind i guess rapid strike scroll flying dragon scroll what a name uh, is a new scroll card for Rapid Strike Pokemon, uh, which for a fire and a lightning has the meteor attack that discards two energy, and then this attack does 90 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So uh, basically, Rapid Strikes can uh, snipe now, but they can snipe anyway, so this is really, really poor, except in exactly Rayquaza VMAX, which doesn't currently have a sniping attack outside of like a Zera Aura. Um, but I think Zero Aura is basically exclusively always better than this because you're playing uh, a Flaffy Engine almost certainly, so you can power up a Zero Aura in a turn, and this just does way more. Uh, you don't even need to have Zero Aura on the bench like you needed to in previous builds where you need to attach to it over two turns um, outside of exactly Coco Prism. You can just burst a Zero Aura nowadays. So uh, it's, it, unfortunately, this is just 
bad, basically, because we have an already splashable sniping Pokemon in the exact deck it would be in. Yeah, Rayquaza doesn't want this for a mirror match either, I don't think. I think there'll be better cards you can play in general, just be more consistent. Yeah. Thing. Well, even then, Zeraora takes out two Flaffies at once, right? Because the 100 can kill a Flaffy. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but that has to, I mean, the speed of this being like a turn two play kind yeah, of Yeah, that's true, that's true. I guess is the only element that you can argue for it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think it won't be good enough. With the new stadium, though, I imagine you're going to be able to put, get multiple rapes down in a turn, so... Yep, especially in Mirror, where there's yeah. not going to be a bounce to that stadium. Exactly. Yeah. Underworld Mask is a new sub, uh, a new tool card, sorry. If the Pokemon this card is attached to is in the active spot and is damaged by an attack, your opponent chooses a card from their hand and discards it. This is actually not terribly... Um, not It's not terrible in terms of the amount of disruption it can push because, uh, you know, things like uh, Imposing Helmet kind of still give resources back. This is this is purely minusing resources, which is pretty cool. Um, I think we have better tools in general right now, but against something like... Um, well, basically any deck that's going to be trying to disrupt you... Uh, disrupt the hand size that kind of thing it could be fairly interesting the thing is because it's not a random card because the opponent gets to choose they always pick their worst card and that if they're picking their worst card you're gonna have to give them a pretty bad hand a pretty good hand for it to you to be getting a good card so if they're picking a good card it's probably because they've got more good cards so the disruption is cool but because of the stipulation that they get to choose uh, i think that's probably is, is going to want to keep is going to be what keeps this as bulk pretty much yeah, it could be fun with Garb. Yes. You double up the ability. It could be decent yeah. with Mali V Max, which is seeing a bit of play. Because yeah. any card that they take out, you then increase your chances of actually hitting the cards that are good with the attack of a Mali, mm -hmm. which I think is interesting. Uh, but yeah, very fringe, I think, overall. Yeah, we have a lot of good tools right now anyway. Um, yeah. So yeah. A Shauna reprint, I think, is largely inconsequential, again, because of the quality of supporters we have right now. Um, unfortunately, we're basically going to say this until either one, research Marnie and Boss rotate, or two, something better gets printed than any of them. Uh, most of these supporters are going to be pretty niche, uh, which is which is unfortunate. But you know, it it's it's how it is when they uh, print such good supporters in the first place. Um, similarly, with Schoolboy, draw two cards if your opponent has. An odd number of prizes, draw two more. Uh, we'll see the counterpart in the other set, but again, just absolutely terrible in terms of draw support. Um, yeah. Though you are always drawing four if you play four schoolboy and four school uh, four schoolgirl. You're always drawing four, so that's that's a, a thing, I guess. You can play the play the draw four deck, but yeah, that's obviously absolutely terrible. Zinnia's resolve is actually one that could potentially be. Uh, somewhat fringe in some decks in terms of making it into the support account. Discard two cards from your hand in order to play this card. Draw one card for each of your opponent's Pokemon in play. So this is kind of similar to something like an Erica's or a Steven's Resolve. Um, obviously they require, they require they have a stipulation of how many cards you can have in hand. Steven's Advice, by the way. Sorry, Steven's Advice, not Steven's Resolve. That was definitely <laughs> was like, a very different a card. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, Zinnia's um, doesn't need you to have a small hand size it just needs you to discard two cards so this is still a this is a draw supporter like basically even when you've got a big hand which is pretty cool um and against like drawing six is actually fairly relevant drawing four you're we're still kind of wondering whether it's worth it but drawing six is actually good um so it's definitely not as terrible as some of the others i don't i still think it's probably only ever going to see fringe numbers just because uh we have draw seven that's so readily available um yeah. but there is at least like some options now for holding resources as well as drawing cards um it's, it's really weird because this card is outclassed as a discard card by research and outclassed as a draw card by research but for the exact situation where you have resources in hand already uh, it is it is interesting so i think this could see fringe um play potentially but i think it's still just under the mark yeah, it feels like one to two of it will be the sweet spot where it's like a Rayquaza where you just want extra discard synergy. Or if you're playing yeah. Moltres or if you're playing Shadow Rider, I could see one or two copies in that deck as well. Because like, I play Sinlin as a one count at the moment in that deck just for when I draw into it. <clears throat> I want to grow the hand and like hold a boss but keep digging kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, so Zinni is good for that effect. Um, I think it's 
Yeah, the the format's moved on from things like Steam's advice. It's too fast of a format to wait around for your opponent to be set up before you draw cards. Yeah. Uh, so you need to play the proactive stuff first. But I can see it being a one or two of, especially in discard synergy decks. Yeah, it's like it's like how we've seen like Hapu's played here and there. It feels like another kind of Hapu style card, yeah. where it's never going to be the backbone except for very niche scenarios. But it is it is at least you know that fifth or sixth draw supporter, which is cool. Uh, then Stormy Range, this is a good card. This is basically a Brooklyn Hill reprint for Lightning Pokemon and Dragon Pokemon. So, when it's during each player's turn, that player may search the deck for a basic Lightning or Dragon Pokemon and put it onto their bench. Uh, Brooklyn Hill, I think, is undeniably one of the best stadiums ever printed. It was absolutely insane. It, you know, it it made dark, uh, br uh, sorry, fighting decks work, and it made water decks work. It was kind of a three to four of in basically all of those for the majority of its. Uh, tenure in the format, and I don't see this being any different. This works in dragon decks, this works in lightning decks, this happens to work in a deck that has dragon and lightning Pokemon, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, this is just a really, really good stadium, and again, because this is uh, post-rotation, uh, Swell will finally be gone, so this actually sticks around, which is really good. Uh, I like good stadiums, I like stadiums that actually have more of an impact than something like a Swell, or uh, I like people getting into the game, uh, and I think this is this is a perfect way of doing it. It's kind of uh, <laughs> crazy how much they're pushing Ray V Max, but even outside of Ray V Max, this will find play in decks all over the shop just because um, it's just so good. It probably less it's probably less good than Brooklet because Dragon types are really really niche. They're either very good or very bad. Whereas kind of uh, Brooklet made some water types and some fighting types good. Um, but yeah, you have that effect with lightning types with this one, which is really cool. So yeah, don't expect this to go anywhere. This is a really, really strong stadium. And giving giving Ray inbuilt answer to path is really important because Ray wants to draw with its ability as well. So yeah, that's really nice. It's basically got the fog crystal slot you see right now in Shadow Rider, but it means you only have to commit like one extra Marshadow maybe to your list. Yeah, or not Marshadow because it'll rotate, but one extra like answer card yeah. instead. Or you just go full four copies and try and bounce, bounce, bounce kind of deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really cool stadium. I like I like stadiums that let people play the game as well. Not path. This is like the complete opposite yeah. of path, which is great. Yeah. Uh, and then an Aurora Energy reprint. So just before we go over the rest of the Pokemon, let's do the rest of the trainers just to have a real global uh, impact of what trainers we're getting. Where are we? Escape route reprint and Evo Incense reprint. Swap Cup is the first new trainer. Switch a card from your hand with the top card of your deck. So this is basically a Ranguru's ability on an item. Um, you would never play an item for this effect. It's too weak. It's too slow. There are obviously some synergies. We see uh, people playing Guru with those exact, those exact synergies. But Guru lets you do this every turn for free. Uh, it doesn't take up a card in your deck. And can be used you know, mul for multiple turns. So yeah, this is obviously a strong effect. But it's not good on a trainer at all. Just because it's a it is a physical card rather than an ability that you just plop on the bench and forget about yeah it's a minus one for mustard that's how bad this card is ah so it's good <laughs> uh, okay rescue trolley is a uh, new trainer card choose up to two pokemon with 90 hp or less and put from your discard pile reel them and put them into your hand i'm really excited about this card i think this is a great card uh i think this is a positive step in uh, the direct in a direction for single prize decks, I think this is really good for evolving decks. Well, decks that want to evolve things like Flaffies and Mareeps and stuff. This is really good for those. Um, Rod is being played right now for both effects, and it's not quite as flexible as that. But having the instant access is really good. It's a shame it goes uh, or it comes into format at the same time as something like Mew and Marshadow both rotate, which is really unfortunate. Yeah. It would be perfect right now because there's so many tech. Like little Pokemon like that, that this would really, really appreciate. But regardless, I, I still think alone just being able to play one of these in a Flaffy style engine is going to be really good. It's going to help you not worry too much about Ray's attack, not Ray's ability, sorry, and uh, researches and all of that stuff because you can get all of this stuff back, which is really cool. Um, also, should not at all, well, not massively, but does help stem the bleeding a little bit against Reshi, uh, against Rapid Strike as well. Um, so yeah, you just give them more prizes. <laughs> well, you do just give them more prizes. Uh, but yeah, I really like this card. I'm I like I like recovery, um, and I think this is a nice way of doing it. Yeah, it seems really nice for any 
like you say, one prize deck plus Cincino kind of thing. Yeah, Cincino is really good. Cincino is really good. Um, uh, it feels good for Malamar Rapid Strike as well because it's uh, damage as well as just getting back like your chain of inkes kind of thing, which yeah. I think is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, it seems good for some one prize decks, keeping that door open, I guess, a little bit. And yeah, maybe some more heavily discard focused builds like that flappy synergy you mentioned. You could see it in those sorts of decks as well. Definitely. Uh, Digging Gloves is another of these glove cards uh, that does 30 extra damage to fighting type Pokemon. We now have six of the nine types, um, or ten types, or however many Pokemon say we the uh, canon anymore. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see whether every type gets one of these. We have Single Strike Scroll Dragon's Fang. Uh, this is kind of the counterpart to the Sniping Scroll for the Rapid Strikes. Uh, this is Super Strength Smash for fighting Metal Metal Colorless Colorless. Uh, this is 300 damage and discard all energy from this Pokemon. Uh, it's a it's just that big wombo combo, uh, kind of 300 damage. Again, it's a really weird one to put in because typically this is what single strike Pokemon are good at anyway. It's kind of bizarre to have a big blow up attack on a single strike Pokemon. Typically they're known for doing these big attacks, but there are certain attacks that don't reach 300. Uh, five energy is a huge cost though. It's 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 a lot of energy. I don't think the discard all energy actually is that impactful because most of these style effects have that text anyway and you know something like a rapid strike urshi sorry a single strike urshi has that effect uh and we've and has seen you know it, it is played it's it's attack is decent it's used it can kill v maxes and tag teams and stuff so um i don't think the text matters too much i just don't know whether the energy commitment is ever worth it uh considering a lot of the time we can push to these numbers with things like single strike energy and stuff anyway yeah, I think I think they're trying to push it alongside Duraladon Vmax, yeah. right? Because we've got a metal Duraladon, so we could try and saucer a bunch to it. Well, we have Bronzong um, as well, and Bronzong potentially. Yeah, I feel um, I feel like yeah, I feel like the the um, the Dragon Duraladon is kind of it's it's perfect part in the same way like Ray and Flaffy work together. I feel like Bronzong is a fantastic partner for Duraladon. So yeah, I could maybe see it in there. Obviously, we have things like Saucer and Zation just to naturally make that deck. It's cutting five energy is ridiculous. It is. That's <laughs> like, that's that the is thing. ridiculous. That's the uh, thing. But I guess the argument would be you build a Duraludon V Max, you get the first hit somehow, <laughs> then they hit you, then you like hit them back, and then you've got this option to be like the blow up, either on like your benched one or like you say, if you've bronze on Cheryl synergy kind of thing, and then you build towards this one knockout to end the game like quickly. Yeah, I can't picture this exact list yet. Obviously, we've only had the cards for twelve hours or so, so I don't think anyone can picture an exact list yet. But like, I can see, I can see this, I can see the Duraludon deck working to an extent. I don't know whether it's just going to be another single strike deck that just suffers from being a little bit inconsistent, uh, the way single Probably. strike does right now. <laughs> but I can, Probably, yeah. I, I, I see it. I see what they're going with it, and I'm actually interested to at least build a list, look at a sixty, and work out whether it's going to be. Um, actually worth playing because naturally like the thing about single strike is it doesn't have really a good core behind it obviously uh, Houndoom is a great core but there's no draw engine behind it but having Zacian and Metal Sources as, as the backup is like you can just win games off of tempo which right now single strike can't do particularly well so it's like you can maybe this becomes like a 2-2 line maybe like the Duraludon stuff is like a 2-2 line and a Bronzong style deck I don't know uh, but yeah, definitely, it's it's a weird one. Maybe this is seen as a tech card. Um, I mean, you could you could still build Houndoom Saucer and just hope that you get enough urns to like reload this somehow, like in a turn. Yeah, it feels very unlikely, but yeah, that's another way they could try and push it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, pretty interesting. We have the full face shield. Of this Pokemon, the Pokemon this card is attached to, except Pokemon with abilities, takes twenty less damage from your opponent's Pokemon's attacks. So, yeah, this is a really weird one. It's kind of like... Uh, well, it's essentially an Eviolite um, for abilities instead of base for non-abilities instead of basics. I don't know where this sits. I don't think the 20 minus is actually relevant enough right now because uh, so much can go over the top. It's probably somewhat relevant in some VMAX decks, but the thing is we have Big Charm, so this needs to... This needs to proc twice for it to be better than Big Charm. Um, which I guess it probably does the majority of the time. If you're as long as you get 
As long as you don't get one shot, it's better than Big Charm, I guess. It's reducing more damage. Um, but obviously it only works for ability for non-ability Pokemon. Yeah, this is definitely kind of sus, this card. It doesn't, <laughs> seem, it doesn't seem very good. It's it, it feels like it's outclassed in a lot of places. Um, but yeah, an interesting one. Raihan is a supporter card. I've probably butchered that name. I think it's Ray, Rayhan, Raihan, I don't know. Um, Your guess is as good as mine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is kind of like the new Rosa. You can only play this card if one of your Pokemon was knocked out during your opponent's last turn. Choose one basic energy card from your discard pile and attach it to one of your Pokemon. Search your deck for any card and put it into your hand. Uh, so yeah, this is, again, a bit of a spin on um, uh, Rosa. It's obviously doing completely different things, but it's kind of that, you know, you've taken, your opponent's taken a prize, so you need to get back into the game. Uh, searching for any one card is actually pretty decent, especially when you can search for something like a Crobat uh, to be able to make this a draw supporter as well as an energy acceleration, which is cool. Um, it's a really good one to evaluate. I don't. It's very difficult to kind of tell where this card goes because it kind of depends on what decks need energy acceleration that don't already have it. It's, it's, it's actually a really difficult one to evaluate, I think. Yeah, it's a deck that needs to have acceleration that probably still isn't a VMAX deck because you want to get multiple option opportunities to use the supporter yeah. so it has to be like a one prize deck that needs a bit of acceleration that you would prefer this over rosa which i think niches it down quite hard seems like rosa was already like a maybe one or two of in even like stage two lists you know yeah it's a really uh, weird so one. i think he's ultimately pretty bad hmm. rosa, rosa does rotate opportunities though. for him yeah, yeah it feels like we're moving more towards a v max meta where you're only going to get to use this card once before you've lost the game so yeah Okay, Schoolgirl was kind of the um, was the card I was alluding to earlier on that is the opposite of the Schoolboy, that draws four if your opponent has an even amount of prizes remaining. Obviously, uh, just as bad, unfortunately. We have a Copycat reprint. Um, Copycat, again, I think is probably fairly inconsequential just, to, just due to the amount of good supporters right now. Um, but in a world where, you know, something like Shadow Rider exists... Uh, you know, people sometimes did play, did tech copycat here and there for certain scenarios. So, you know, it's not it's not worth ignoring. But I think, you know, we again we have such high quality supporters right now. It's hard to justify this over something like a Marnie or something. Yeah, and, and Marnie's actually the reason why this will see very little play, right? Because yeah. your opponent by Marnieing you is also lowering their hand size. Yeah. Probably after playing the Marnie down to like three cards. So it then means that if you draw into a copycat after Amani, you're very sad. Yeah, <laughs> so it's pretty bad. Can't play it. Crystal Cave is another uh, is another pseudo reprint uh, catered towards Dragon type Pokemon. This is a uh, sort of a similar reprint to uh, what was it called? Rough Seas. Once yeah. during each player's turn, that player may heal thirty damage from each of their Metal and Dragon Pokemon. Again, Rough Seas was one of the best stadiums of its time. Uh, both of these came out. Both of those stadiums came out with like. Uh, within a separate block, Rough Seas was XY and Brooklet was Sun and Moon, and both of them kind of saw play for the whole time they were in uh, format, which is really cool. Uh, so it's cool that we're seeing two stadiums. I think obviously there's a bit of crossover here, but I think both of these stadiums very obviously cater towards the VMAXs in their set. Um, but it's nice knowing we can play either one in either one. It's pretty cool. Uh, I think healing isn't going to be overly important because. The minus 30, uh, I think, will very rarely actually take a two-shot into a three-shot, uh, especially with the numbers that Pokemon are pumping out right now. But there will be certain situa situations and maybe some healing along with, you know, some damage reduction, that kind of thing, might push a two-shot to a three-shot. So there may be certain situations, there'll be certain decks that want this because it works out exactly that they have enough HP to not be uh, two-shot by... A couple of Pokemon here and there, and again with no swell, this actually stays in play now, which is cool. Um, yeah, but I yeah. Think it, it could overtake the Luke Metal part of uh, Luke Metal. <laughs> yeah, when <laughs> Luke Metal you rotates, play, you can play the Shield and Zamazenta and have this as your bounce to path, which I think is quite big mm -hmm. for tanky Zamazenta. Yeah, uh, so that's important as well as the Vmaxes. The thing, the interesting thing is because this searches out dragon, uh, because it searches out all dragon Pokemon though, it'll be interesting to see whether think still things like Duraludon just choose to play that to be consistent rather than 
to be the tanky build. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> Duraludon is definitely the more tanky of the two, but we have things like Cheryl anyway, and if we're playing it with yeah. a bronze bronzong engine, we don't even need necessarily uh, to have this. This is yeah. This will definitely see a lot less play. Than, yeah. Uh, than the actively searching. Yeah. Stadium. Alrighty, and then finally a twin energy reprint as well. So that's all the trainers. Now we have a bit of an idea of what uh, what trainers we're looking at. We can actually start looking at some of the Pokemon. Um, I think the first one that is worth at least touching on is the Hoppip, Skipim, Jumpluff line. Yep. Uh, they're all Rapid Strike Pokemon. Skiploom uh, has the ability Solar Evolution, which uh, lets you evolve it from, with a Pokemon from your deck whenever you attach an energy to it, which is actually really good for... Like, this is a... We always talk about how to make stage shoes good, stage shoes more consistent. This is a, this is the perfect way. This is a really good uh, ability to have. This is exactly what we need to see more of. Um, it doesn't matter that this attack is garbage because we're never ever going to be uh, attacking with it, really. Yeah. And then the jump Jumpluff has Fluffy Combo Strike as the ability. This Pokemon may attack twice in a turn. If the first attack goes an opponent's Pokemon, you may attack again after your opponent chooses a new active Pokemon. So this is, a ben this is essentially the um, Omega... Barrage. Barrage, okay. that's it, yes. Um, Ancient Trait as an ability. The attack is only doing 60 damage, so I don't. but I don't think this is an attack we're actually looking at. I think it's one of the scroll attacks that, if ever, this um, sees play is going to be what you're doing with it. I can't remember what the scroll's called. Um, the spread one? Yeah, the spread one I think is really, really interesting. Uh, is it uh, Maelstrom? Something Maelstrom? Let me search it. So, uh, Scroll of Swirls. Yeah, Scroll of Swirls. Maelstrom. There you the go. Attack. Uh, remind me of the damage on that attack, Joe. <laughs> remind me of the entire card. <laughs> for, for fighting two colorless, you do 30, it's 30 to right, each yeah. of your opponent's Pokemon. So yeah, this but is... Of course, you do have Persimian. So you could be doing 120 a turn spread. Yeah. So yeah, this is... This is... Uh, the, a way, like I think it's the only way you're ever actually going to be attacking with this. Uh, I think... Ultimately, this is going to be the novelty one prize deck of the set, uh, similar to how we we kind of seem to um, get one of these style archetypes every set. I think this is going to be the novelty one prize archetype, but it's actually really cool that they've had this added this ability in, especially like we now kind of have a reason for um, some of the scrolls, which is cool. Someone's just reminded me that the scroll of skies, which is fifty times their energy, is uh, actually not irrelevant because all of it like a hundred times their energy would be insane so you know it's 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 okay. still only technically 50 but at least it's like you know you you actually can take prizes with it hdp jump love yeah I, I think this is really cool I, I like that we've got the new uh stretcher card whatever it's called yeah for 90 hit point pokemon obviously it's a level ballable lots of search cards turf field so lots of ways to make sure you chain the jump bluff. It's just trying to figure out that attack cost for scrolls to make it worthwhile or find some other damage buffs. I can't think of many damage buffs that actually help this too much. Persimian is one um, of the only one. Um, yeah, Persimian for bench damage. Is there anything else that can help into the active? I know there's a... We'll talk about Ludicolo later, but I don't think there's any that just sits in play that increases damage, right? Not like a very interesting card, of. though. Yeah, maybe, it, do, maybe just a scroll activator is enough for this card. Yeah, but yeah, it's going to be gloves. For hoops dot deck, but still. So Panic just dropped the gloves. You are right. You can play one of each gloves and just search out the Every right gloves. Glove possible. That is genius. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I think this deck is again kind of like I say the novelty one prize deck of the set, but sure. it actually seems like a lot of fun to be honest. Yep. Uh, Tropius has rally back, but it's I think pretty bad. Mm -hmm. Simi Sage is pretty bad. Trevenant V is the first V we'll talk about. Trevenant also got a V Max. Uh, one, sorry, two ten HP. Absorb life for two energy. It does thirty heal thirty. I actually probably shouldn't do that so people can read the card. And then Shadow Claw does one twenty. You discard a random card from your opponent's hand. Both pretty underwhelming in all fairness. The V Max has Forest Song, which I think is a really interesting attack. Forty times the number of. Uh, supporter cards in your opponent's discard pile. So we've seen this as item cards before, which was absolutely bonkers. Support cards is a bit more niche. Obviously, they're typically support counts are like at most 12, whereas items are like 25, 30. 
and I think that's probably going to be what limits this card overall. Um, yes, late game this is still doing what Trash Lunch did, but early game Trash Lunch was still a hugely tempo, a huge tempo attack. Whereas this is probably doing like 120 in the first few turns, maybe 160, pushing to 200. This is going to be a two shot. Um, eventually, it probably will get to one shot ranges, but it's still a lot of supporters, and it feels like with items. You couldn't really play around Garbodor all that much because a lot of the time items were what got, they were your search, they were all sorts. Whereas with certain supporters, because we have Marnie, we can just still draw cards fairly easily whilst not researching, binning all of these cards. We have multiple ways to draw cards with outside of using supporters. I feel like it doesn't take too long to kind of soft cap someone at like 120 here, um, which could be a thing. I, 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 I think it's a really interesting attack, but I think it's underwhelming overall. Yeah, Supporter Launch is much worse than Trash Launch, I think. Uh, I like its late game of being two for like 200, but it's still not a lot to write home about, I don't think. No, do we have any acceleration for this right now as well? There's going to be the Leafy on that can accelerate on like turn one, I guess. Mm. But yeah. Yeah, I think that's it. Outside of that. Yeah, pretty underwhelming overall. I've got an Aplin, a Vulpix, we have a Ninetales with Secret Path of the Fox Spirit, what a great ability name, uh, that gives all of your Pokemon that have a Fire fire Energy attached to less retreat. Um, not overly relevant, I don't think, we've seen better Ninetales out there. It's pretty unfortunate that uh, we've seen such good Ninetales in the past that it's kind of been relegated to a, a retreat, free retreater, but hey, um, you know, they can't all be good, I guess, unfortunately great cube card a great cube that. card victini has victory dive for dc uh, 30 damage and you may search for up to two cards and put them into your hand this is universal um tutoring which is interesting i think it's the only thing worth noting i don't think it's really going to see play anywhere but having universal tutoring um could be good for we, we early game cram already right yeah yeah we do have it from cram i guess um but yeah pretty interesting Panseer and Simiseer are... Oh, look at that Simiseer art. Hold on. Yes. Hold on. Yes. That is incredible. I don't, I don't know, know what's going on. I don't think the text matters, but the text really does not matter when you're looking at that. Camille's committed again. Who knows <laughs> what's going on? Uh, okay. Volker in a V has a very reminiscent attack to Victini Prism. Uh, 20 plus 20 for each fire in your disc sorry each basic energy in your discard pile and then shuffle those cards back into your deck um, we've seen how good Victini, v uh, Victini Prism Star was and that was 2 energy and that was 20 times not 20 plus so this is a straight up buff on that attack uh, unfortunately it's probably at a time where fire is getting hit really hard because it loses hearth it loses welder uh, um, and it's just going to go back to probably playing a not a huge account, uh, a huge count, closer to like 9 or 10 maybe, uh, with Victini VMAX. So this isn't going to be doing the broken things that um, the Victini Prism used to be doing. But, you know, it's it's interesting at least to see in those two weeks, maybe we will get a old school Tempo Zard back, uh, or Ability Zard back, where all of a sudden Volcarona can be doing absolutely nuts. Um, I, I think this is... This is a one of including the random Flareon VMAX deck as well that pitches loads of your top cards of your deck, right? That's why it, tr it tries to bin lots of fire. I think so, yeah, 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 yeah. So this can like be the camera. reload. Uh, not what's it? It's like Typhlosion, so. Yeah, this can be the, the reload. But yeah, still very bad. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> what a Sizzlypede and a Senti Scorch. Um, again, pre look at that art, though. Great art. Him. Great art. Uh, the shoulder artwork. The shoulder's great as well. Look at that. Yeah, we do need to have a look at some of these artworks just to. They're all caught up in the bloody. The whirlwind. They're loving it. They are. He looks really angry though. Yeah. Uh, Cloister's pretty poor, unfortunately. Gyarados V has Temper Tantrum, 20 times the number of damage counters on this. Typically, you're not going to have a huge amount of damage counters on this, but I've seen people talking about. Gyarados VMAX with Memory Capsule. Um, I personally think the idea sounds pretty horrible because, uh, you know, you need to take a hit to be taking any prizes and then you get 
knocked out, and then the next Gyarados doesn't really do anything until you've taken a hit. So, yeah, it feels like it's uh, pretty poor. It's also controlled by the opponent. They can do a little poke so that you can't do anything, and then do their, you know, 270 or whatever, based on what they're playing. So I think it is a bit of a pipe dream, personally. Um, it's a shame. It's a shame it was Gyarados that got hit with such a bad card. Yeah, the VMAX needed higher tempo to try that scroll, uh, the bloody memory capsule thing, right? I think, yeah, I think it needed a one energy attack that actually did something for the turns that you couldn't do anything. Because right now you're. Even like... with Melanie, a three energy memory capsule play is like a lot to try yeah. and pull off. Yeah. So that's pretty unfortunate. Again, it's kind of sad that it's a Gyarados, but hey ho. Um. Darren Racker and Darren Manitan are pretty poor. We've seen this kind of attack on, uh, what do you call it before? Bolton before that's seen no play. So we know that this yep. text is uh, pretty weak. Mm -hmm. Cryogonal is kind of like that old Togekiss uh, that had, a, had this as an ability. This is uh, somewhat universal energy acceleration, but because of water energy, it's not really, which sucks. And we have Melanie for uh, VMAX decks. So this is exclusively good in like water one prize decks well we have Frostmoth for that so yeah. you know it feels like this is again just the wrong type if this was colorless it could have I think potentially been interesting um, but yeah the fact that it's a water energy is pretty bad I've got a wishy washy now this is a cool card wishy washy has 30 HP but if yeah. there has if it has 3 water energy attached to it or at least 3 uh, it has 180 HP uh, which is pretty annoying uh, especially on a one prizer, though. In all fairness, we've seen a lot of one prizes around with HPs like this, and they've still never been great. Um, group shot does thirty for two colorless, and it does thirty more for each basic energy attached to this po attached to this Pokemon. So I think exclusively this is like a Frostmoth deck, right? If anything, um, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> we have plenty of water attackers though. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely an interesting one. I like I like that they're giving more of these close to playable cards, the rapid strike text, so that basically we have to look back at these every time we get more singles and rapids. <laughs> Flaffy is the big winner of the set. Dynamotor is uh, an exact reprint of Eel, uh, electric from back in the day, which is pretty cool. Once during your turn, you may attach a lightning energy from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. Uh, we'll see that, that there is a fantastic partner for this in this set alone, but I think in general, um, this is an amazing ability. We've seen this in many different iter iterations. We've seen it as an electric. We've seen it as a bronzong. We've seen it as a malamar for different types. All three of them were fantastic. Basically, the whole time they were in format, they made their respective types basically have an archetype the whole the, like the whole time. Uh, and expect no different from Flaffy. This is, I think, a really nice reprint to see. Feels weird that it's lightning, just because it feels like we've had. Peek Rom around forever and Lightning's been good forever. Um, and then finally when Lightning is rotating, Lightning is back. Uh, but at least in this in this sense, it's probably gonna be a dragon type attacker, at least for a little while. Yep. Seems really good though. Obviously there's precedence before. Chat's already mentioned that Urshifu will be a headache to deal with, but that's just one deck in the format, right? So. Yeah. For sure. Uh, the Ampharos is obviously terrible. 220 though, broken. Uh, Plus and Minin, I thought at least were uh, pretty cute for the art, how they're kind of doing their little uh, karate poses and stuff on in various situations, both some rapid strikes. Uh, Plus actually does 120 for one, which is pretty cool, but unfortunately, you know, you don't want to have to be switching between these the whole time just to be <laughs> doing 120. I do think the art on these is great though. Yeah. Waving in the background. Uh, Toxtricity auto paralyzes, but we have so many ways to switch uh, now. Unfortunately, it's just well, paralysis just really isn't good, especially when we're also losing stamp, so we can't even stamp paralyze someone anymore. Um, you can paralyze path to the peak someone, but I think that's a lot worse than stamp. So yeah, we need an we need a new armor star for this to have any <laughs> sander ability. <laughs> sander ability. Uh, Regieleki, this is the first ever Regieleki card that for some reason has two retreat, the fastest Pokemon in the game. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Uh, Terravolt does 120, 
and you discard all energy attached and do 42 uh, two of its bench Pokemon. The only reason I'm particularly looking at this is just because these kind of attacks we now have to look at because Flaffy exists. Um, yeah. This can be played as a one of and be. Uh, we, we can get it into play in one turn, which is um, pretty insane. I think there's already a Zapdos that basically has a 160 snipe on a, a multi prizer, so. Yeah, you could basically play like one Regilecki for one prize archetypes and one Zapdos for uh, like the GX archetypes, and you know you've got a really good one prize attacker for basically every uh, matchup then, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's also going to be worth. We won't do this today, but it's also going to be worth going back through basically every Lightning Pokemon, at least Lightning Basic, in the past yeah. five or six sets, just to see what we can actually power up in a turn now. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, pretty interesting. Sandshrew has everybody roll out. The only reason I'm po- pointing this out is because this is, again, another of those uh, forcing a one prize archetype uh, into the set. Everybody roll out is uh, basically it does 20 damage for each of the Pokemon on your bench that has the everybody roll out attack. Uh, there's multiple different types that have this attack, and there's a little bit of synergy in a that uh, for this attack as well. In general, it's not going to be good, but it's at least worth pointing out just because you're joking people will want to build it is it not oh jack uh, i want to play four of him <laughs> he is good i do think the art is great i love these little clay arts to be honest so <laughs> it um, works with true. yeah it really does <laughs> dig up dig up a cut on sand slash i think it's only worth noting because it is putting a card from your discard pile into your hand we do have slurpluff slurpuff yeah slurpuff is how that pokemon is pronounced yep. um post rotation but that's coin flips this is at least a guaranteed card uh, but because it's two energy i'm pretty sure this is kind of going to be gate kept forever uh, which is unfortunate yeah. oh boy medicham v this is one that is i think going to take a lot of thinking and i will caveat immediately what we say over the next couple of minutes we will miss something with this card because it is absolutely nuts for two energy uh, you have Yoga Loop. Put two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. If your opponent's Pokemon is knocked out by this attack, at the end of your turn, you can take another turn. This attack can't be used if any of your Pokemon used Yoga Loop during your last turn. So you can't just chain Yoga Loop forever, but you can at least take an extra turn. And taking an extra turn sounds great. It is great, but it's, it's actually greater than you realise because taking an extra turn uh, means that you draw this is this attack essentially says also draw three four five maybe even ten cards just bit just by taking an extra turn being able to play another research being able to take another couple of prizes um so yeah it's actually a really strong effect can we ever cater it so that we can get something so low that they only have two damage counters on them well with something like intellions we can actually make it uh make them have like 80 hp or something that means things like Jirachi and that kind of stuff. Um, well, Jirachi's rotating, but those kind of cards um, are all knocked out because we can uh, do some quick shooting and then Yoga Loop. Kind of the issue with that though is we're taking if we're taking one prize, we're not going that far. Like even if even with two turns, if you're taking two prizes across two turns, you're still only taking two prizes. So why didn't you just play an attacker that did 270 and took two prizes in the first place on that turn? So it's a really difficult card to evaluate. I'm certain someone will break this card. I'm certain this card will be broken somehow. But I think on initial impressions, it needs it needs to be a very specific metagame where we have enough Pokemon out there for it to be worth it. Like enough targets that aren't, you know, these massive colossal VMAX HPs. Yeah, I, I, the thing is, I think you hit the nail on the head though, like things like that Inteleon manipulating damage we already know that Urshifu Inteleon is a deck yeah right now this is a rapid strike so you just one attachment of rapid strike energy gets yes. you there so you just t- you bring it up tickle something take the extra turn to get two more pings of Inteleon and then finish off with um Ur- uh, yeah Urshifu so it it buys you that turn to get like six pings into play which i think is ridiculous um could be a way that you even make like a stalling Inteleon deck where you have like Medicham finishing off things just so you get extra pings and you go back into like a Cryogonal, something like that, which I think yeah. is pretty interesting. Um, and yeah, you can draw a silly amount of cards with an extra turn. Like, 
mm. Ghost Rider can build up to like 300 damage or something, or like enough to kill a V Max if you, because you're a 30 times multiplier, you can put yourself in range of, you know, 20 off on occasion, I yeah. guess. Um, obviously, you can't accelerate to the meta champ, you'd have to hard attach to it over a couple of turns, or you play the tech one and one rapid strike or two rapid strike or whatever. Mm. You, you yoga loop and then you build up to above 300. And, 10 damage you know so you can actually deal with a vmax mm. same thing for rayquaza you can power this up in a turn uh and then the rayquaza can draw your shedload of cards and flaffy a shedload of cards it's like two damage counters is niche enough that it's not going to happen too often outside of urshifu i think yeah but i i definitely would play an urshifu right now i think yeah you can definitely manipulate counters here and there especially with things like even even like something like a persimian is enough to is more damage manipulation to get the numbers exactly where yeah. you need to you have persimmon you have sight you have um inteleon so you can basically do whatever amount of damage you need to do yeah. um this will never be overly gatekeeping as well like you say the two damage counters is actually so poor it can never it's never just a good attack and uh it can't you, you know it can't really be too impactful but yeah it's definitely a really interesting one it feels like this those... oh, go on. Go on. i was just going to say it feels like it's like one of those kind of cards where there will be those highlight, highlight reel moments but it will probably only ever be a maybe one of but in the maybe one of slot it's definitely uh has a high impact in the games it's used in yeah it kind of reminds me of uh late game horror house and shadow rider uh, but now urshifu yeah. can do it so like you're allowed to research on a turn do some pings and then end on a meta cham yeah, and you don't have to win the game. That boss for next game or whatever, you know, yeah. you've got that extra turn of ping damage to actually set up that V Max for the KO or something like that. So definitely seems good in Urshi because mm -hmm. you naturally just already are playing for rapid strike energies. Yeah, for uh, sure. But it's a lot more work to to get it to function in other decks, I think. Yeah, I think it'll be a fun one to play around with though, and it has definitely fun. It has that, it, yeah, it has that, like I say, that highlight reel moment always with it, which is cool. Um, Claydol is a Pokemon that actually sets Pokemon down to a certain amount of HP, which is pretty funny. You could play Cl Claydol and Teleon Medicham, why not? Um, Landorus is a one prize fighting Pokemon. I don't think we really need right now because our fighting Pokemon are just so good. Is it just your opponent's active Pokemon or any Pokemon? The two damage counters can go on any Pokemon. Yeah, I think. You want I think this is. I think this is the most interesting card of the set. By the way, uh, I don't this think it's is... the best, but I think it's the most interesting. This or the Golurk, yeah. probably. It feels it feels really good for Urshifu. I think I think it definitely goes in that deck as exactly the one count. Yeah. Um, it's a dimension to just like needing it in hand this turn or not. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the Landorus is a nice one prize attacker for certain situations. If we ever get to a point where we need a wall breaker for one prizes or whatever, um, but we have no fighting acceleration right now, especially for a non rapid strike fighting Pokemon, so. Stuffle and Beware. Pretty poor, unfortunately. Dragonite V, we're actually getting in a box uh, a little bit ahead of time, I believe. Has Slash for 50, uh, which is uh, Shred, basically. It goes through all effects. And Dragon Gale does 250, and you do 20 damage to each of your bench Pokemon. Um, 250 for 3 is actually not terrible on a non VMAX. It's actually quite a lot of damage. Uh, this can be Melanied. Uh, in a, a combination of Melanie and Flaffy can actually do this in a turn, which is pretty funny. Uh, but you're playing an odd energy split to be able to do that. Um, but yeah, I think the energy is going to be one of those things where dragons are always going to be capped by their energy cost. And I think this one, unfortunately, is uh, one of those. It's just not quite going to make it anywhere because the energy requirement is so weird. Uh, basically, dragons have always, to some extent, lived and died by their energy cost. Um... And I think this is one of those that unfortunately is going to be, is going to have the same effect. Yeah, this is a Zacian with a rusted sword, but just like with a lot less, a lot less good than that. Basically. Yeah, great art though. I, 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 I think he's he's just great. I really like this art. I I can't say much more about it. I just think this is a really really nice. He's just great. Isn't uh, he? The we have uh, a new Salamence line. The Shelgon, by the looks of it, has some. Uh, potential damage reduction or immunity next turn which is again the kind of thing that these need but for a fire water cost it's pretty unfortunate on a coin flip as well Ugh. on a coin flip as well 
Uh, Salamence has Intimidating Brawl. Once during your turn, you may have your opponent switch their active Pokemon to one of their bench Pokemon. They get to choose, so this is basically once per turn, repel. Uh, can, in certain situations, be a boss, but equally can very much be uh, a lot worse to the point where you probably wouldn't even use it. You would much rather be attacking their active Pokemon, so mostly inconsequential. Um, but yeah, it at least is something. Salvage Dragon for a Fire and Water does 100, and if your opponent's active Pokemon has any damage counters, it does 120 more. Um, again, because this is on a stage two, we have multiple ways to do this amount of damage uh, on stage ones, as in, in VMAXs, and with nicer energy requirements, and nicer like attack requirements. So yeah, they did sound like pretty dirty, dirty here, I think, but uh, again, amazing art, I think. Look at I just think I yeah. think I think all of the dragons you can tell they've really made an effort to bring the dragons back in style, I think. Facts. Uh speaking of yeah, which, yeah. we have Rayquaza V. Uh this is isn't it Mega Salar in the art? No, it's not Mega Salamence. Mega Salamence has one big wing. Um Yeah, Rayquaza V is uh the poster boy of this half of the set. Dragon Pulse is forty. You discard two from the top of your deck, Spiral Burst is 20, and you may discard either two basic fire or two, or up to, sorry, up to two basic fire or up to two basic lightning. You do 80 more for each energy discarded this way. I think this is actually not irrelevant because uh, 180 is a great number against things like Crobat, uh, Elder Goss, that kind of stuff. Uh, especially when this attack cost is uh, I identical to, the, or pretty much identical to the VMAX, so this isn't. This, this is the same strategy you're always going to be running. So having a relevant V Pokemon is actually really important. Uh, also, this is really good for just, um, you know, at least doing a bit of preliminary damage to, um, you know, evolving Vs and stuff to be able to take prizes on the VMAXs that maybe otherwise you don't you wouldn't have enough Flaffies to be able to do with the VMAX and stuff. So pretty good stuff. Uh, but yeah, I really like that this is a non-VMAX version of the VMAX to be able to take a Tempo 2 prizes uh, in combination with a boss at some point. Yeah, and it means if you just play a couple of those, like one prize Pokemon as well, you'll have inbuilt Zamazenta answers without warping the deck, which I think yeah. is important as well. Next set. Definitely. It's also a Rapid Strike Pokemon worth noting because there's a couple of Rapid Strike cards here and there. Yeah. Requires a VMAX. Uh, Sky High Wave is its ability. Once during your turn, you may discard all cards from your hand if you do draw three cards. Uh, I think this is this could be, in some people's eyes, pretty bad, but I think this is deceptively good because... You know, drawing drawing three on an ability is already crazy. When you ha when you you can cater your deck to pl to be full with insta playable cards and uh, you know cards that you don't mind discarding. Things like even just the lightning energy, you don't mind just binning those off to be able to flaffy them on later on. Uh, but yeah, you can make this into a a build that has a lot of insta playables, so you're never really feeling the heat from discarding your hand, and you're gonna have so much. Uh, well, you're going to be able to draw so many cards. It's going to feel like you're drawing pre-support or drawing like six or seven cards, um, which is crazy because you, that means you can still play these bosses and stuff like that, or you can still dig even deeper just to find these flaffies, find these energy to be able to blow up whatever's in the active. Uh, I think it's a really, really strong ability. Super insane ability because this deck is going to be heavily setup based, so... It's not just you want to get your VMAX into play and it's doing enough. You need to swarm Mareeps all over the place. Uh, so in the opening stages, getting these is crazy. It's not limited to just one Sky High Wave, so you could use multiple. Yeah. Especially in the late game, if you've got two Rayquaza set up and if you're pushing for boss for game or whatever, uh, or a combination of like switches and bosses and whatever else, um, it's going to let you dig six cards deeper. Even with no stamp in the game, uh, it's going to help you close in that little bit more. Um, so really, really great. Um, as soon as it's in play, and also in those late game stages. I think maybe in the mid game it's more situational, but uh, otherwise super, super good to have. And the fact that it's stackable is really crazy for making that late game push for whatever combo you need. Yeah, definitely. And then that's before we even talk about the attack. G-Max Burst uh, for that same cost. Fire Lightning does 20 damage. And you may discard any number of basic fire or basic lightning, and this attack does 80 more damage. So essentially, it's removing the damage cap of the V, and uh, that is very, very relevant because all of a sudden you can be uh, KOing VMAXs pretty easily. You can di All you need to do is discard four energy. Uh, so with a multitude of Flaffy on the, um, 
on the bench you can just be powering all of these up discarding a load of energy and taking one prize at uh, three prizes here and there but you can also cater the amount of energy to whatever's in the active so that you save energy for when they do throw up their three prizes later on it's not like uh, you have to discard all of them uh, it's it's any number which is really good uh, someone just asked if you can mix and match you can't mix and match you have to pick one uh, type but that's again not really going to be an issue um, so yeah we've seen basically this card identical or identical something identical to this in the past with uh, Ray and there was an identical eel as well which was crazy um, so yeah it's it's obviously going to be a very very strong card and chat mentioned another good combo is that you can do all these flaffies but you can also rose onto this as well mm -hmm. uh, for a potential like once you're up and running you just smack and then eel eel rose smack yep that's very dangerous yep a vmax that can kill other vmaxes isn't super common in the game right now but rayquaza is probably the way that you're going to see it happen the most now yeah i think this is i think this is the only vmax that can justifiably take a ko like yeah. Turn and it two. has no weakness, by the way. Yeah, no weakness is absolutely <laughs> nuts. Anything for weakness, but it it will one shot stuff anyway. Yeah, it doesn't need to. So yeah, this card is pretty good. I think it's going to be uh, definitely out of the gate a very very good uh, deck to try out. I think there's going to be a lot of people going for these, uh, which is always the way. Um, <laughs> sigh. We sigh. Will we will be buying these. <laughs> uh, we have a Zygarde here. Judgment Surge for Grass Fighting Colorless. Choose one of your opponent's Pokemon. This attack does 40 damage for each prize card your opponent has already taken. Um, kind of... Uh, it's a weird one because I think exclusively this is played with something like a Cherim um, just because of that Grass uh, cost. But we did see another interesting Cherim partner. So maybe Cherim and a load of Dragons is kind of uh, another one prize archetype they're trying to feed us. Um, really hope not. <laughs> this, this feels really bad. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think the majority of the uh, Cherim Cherimable dragons are pretty poor, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, Turtonator, a shell trap which has had before, but again, really awkward cost, unfortunately. Flapple is an interesting one, I think. Um, this is basically pretty much uh, or a very similar print to Weavile. Uh, from what was it? Ultra Prism. Uh, yeah. Acidic Slime does fifty times the. Sorry, yeah, fifty times the number of Pokemon with abilities that your opponent has. Now, obviously, when Weavile was a thing, four abilities would KO something. Whereas now, there can be two. You can your opponent can have six abilities on the board, and it won't KO a Vmax. Uh, so it's not quite as uh, crazy. Uh, damage what well, crazy numbers it was compared to when we were actually like, we were only aiming for like 180 but that being said it's still a huge tempo swing it could this I think can very easily be doing like 200 250 for one which is pretty cool uh, whether we can get a stage one into play a tech stage one into play will kind of it kind of remains to be seen um, we've always out at a time when the game was a lot slower so it's it's gonna be interesting but I think this attacks numbers. This attack. This damage um, multiplication is not irrelevant. I think it's actually one that potentially could just be one of those kind of attackers that is good as a supplementary attacker um, in some kind of one prize box, maybe. Yeah, and the good news is, I mean, Eternatus is packed to the brim with abilities. Rayquaza, Flaffy will have a ton of abilities. Mm -hmm. uh, Shadow Rider has a ton of abilities. Even Rapid Strike Gertrude plays a ton of ability bench Pokemon, so uh, it'll get into those 200s like pretty consistently for one attachment with mm -hmm. a level ball sort of thing. So I can see there being maybe some uh, stage one rush style decks where this becomes a centerpiece. Yeah. Uh, it's also worth noting that both the Appleton and the Fapple have Gung Ho Tackle, which does 160 for two on a V Pokemon. Uh, but again, pretty weak overall. Um, I know this is called, called Acidic Slime. I actually know this isn't what this one's called as well. But the Appleton does have uh, Acidic Slime 2.0, which is 70 times the number of special energy attached to your opponent's Pokemon. Again, there's a fair few special energy around right now. Obviously, this is a higher multiplier because um, typically uh, there's going to be less of these than there are uh, abilities on the board. But again, it's not even like... I think this is still a fairly... Um, Admiral one of if you're playing like a Flapple engine because there will be certain situations certain matchups where there's a load of special energy in there in the opponent's decks 
and this will again be one for like 280 or whatever um which is pretty crazy so i think this is again a really nice attacker it's no i think it's definitely worse than the fapple personally yeah. but um i don't think it's bad at all i think it's uh, potentially a nice one of just depends on where we are at yeah in the format I, I feel like at the moment there aren't so many specials that you're, and your opponent can play around it a lot easier i think yeah that's true um so more questionable i'd say but again level will search balls so could also make the slot mm -hmm. uh, reggie drago this is the other pokemon i was alluding to earlier on has dragon energy for 240 minus which is 20 less for each damage counter on this pokemon the text is pretty irrelevant because this pokemon is probably getting one shot by almost everything um so this is basically three for 200 on a one prize, which is crazy. We don't, we, I don't think we've ever seen anything like this before. Um, on a one prize basic, at least. Uh, people have talked about pairing this with Cherim. Um, I think me and Joe both think it's... that. Well, there's 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 better decks out there. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it, it feels like the... This feels like this is a step in the right direction for one prize Pokemon. But this is so... Um, horrendously obvious it's just big numbers rather than anything particularly complex I don't think it's very exciting at all personally I think the card's actively quite bad as well I think having to split energy typing is pretty awkward when you're always getting knocked out like Rayquaza's going to be splitting his energy typing but you only need to attach like two fire in the game whereas this needs to attach like six fire in the game probably mm. Uh, which is very, very bad. Uh, and we know Cherim is already clunky as hell, so yeah. this is actually going to be a terrible deck. I think this is bait, to be honest. I think this is, I think for me personally, this is the most overhyped card of the set. Oh, I don't, I should, this should have no hype at all. This is a terrible <laughs> card. Um, okay, next up. is not even a payoff in a VMAX meta. No. And it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. no. Yeah. Uh, Shifu destroys this. True. <laughs> Every deck destroys this. Uh, this is the card I was alluding to earlier on. Blissey, I feel like I might have missed... Oh, no, I think they're in the other set, actually. They're coming. Yeah, they're coming. Um, Blissey has the rounded skill ability. Each of, your Pokemon, each of your Pokemon with an everybody roller attack takes no damage from the attacks of your opponent v opponent's VMAX. So this was, again, the other one prize archetype that kind of force-feeding us. I think this is actively pretty bad because the problem with defending from VMAXs is... All of these VMAX decks also play V Pokemon that probably can kill all of these Pokemon, so it doesn't really help. Uh, but at least, you know, it, again, they're trying to push another um, one prize archetype. The one thing I really don't understand is why this costs more, is on a stage one, and still does the same multiplier. I think if this actually had a decent multiplier, uh, this would be interesting, but the fact that this caps at 120 is just horrendous. Well, I guess we have, like, uh, powerful colorless energy, but you know what I'm saying. This soft caps at 120, which is just awful I, I mean this blissey is the one that you just put in play because of the ability right and yeah yeah, yeah but like uh, but like any of them things. any of them having a soft cap of 120 i still think is yeah quite bad uh, yes <laughs> oh it's bench pokemon as well someone should point out so yeah this is a soft cap of 100 yeah <laughs> whoops uh which is pretty bad wild dive on the stantler is the is the last pokemon of the set that is 30 damage times the amount of energy attached to your opponent's active pokemon we've seen this kind of be good in the past but there's nothing that there's so many decks right now that just spread energy. It's never going to be too yep. good. And on to the other half. We'll try and speed through these. Starting with Suicune V, Swift Runner. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon is in the active spot, you may use this ability. Draw a card. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, drawing cards is always good, but unfortunately we have so many other ways of drawing cards right now. I think this uh, falls short a little bit. I think Krikatune... I think a deck catered towards Krikatune will always draw more cards. It's just whether you don't want to... If you don't want to cater towards Krikatune, this can draw a card with a balloon like Krikatune does. But I think catering towards Krikatune isn't terrible, to be honest. Especially when um, we have... Like, we're moving towards a uh, a meta that... Ca there are multiple supporters, multiple instances where um, having a low hand size is important. It kind of... Or helps. It, uh, it means that Krikatune, I think, naturally gains in value anyway. Um, so yeah, I think this is just kind of... It's unfortunate that this is a Suicune compared to a Krikatune, but I think Krikatune is slightly better. The only one... I think the one biggest thing to note, though, is that this at least uh, is a bit chunkier. It doesn't just immediately get blown out by uh, Rapid Strikes. I, I mean, I like Blizzard Rondo as an attack as well. 20 plus 20 for each 
benched Pokemon, your Xander opponents. So. Oh, I thought this was just their their bench. Okay. No, it's both. Okay. Yeah, this so is, okay, that's actually good, yeah. You can hit decent numbers. You can uh, threaten two shot at least on... Yeah, with Melanie as well. Um, ...pretty comfortably. Uh, yeah, Melanie's an option. It could be a, it could just be a starting attacker uh, for Ice Rider. Yeah. It could be its way through Zamazenta as well. So I, I feel like it could make its way into that deck. Yeah, maybe maybe it's a nice, like you say, counter for Zam. Yeah. I know it's probably getting less cards than Krikatoon, but it's still just like... If I'm putting an air balloon on something, it may as well be this. Yeah, yeah. Well, like like you say, I think you play it for this text here. I think you play it for the yeah. Blizzard Rondo, and then you get to draw cards sometimes, which yeah, is pretty cool. People are mentioning it with Ludicolo if you go full on Suicune. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, Ludicolo has the energetic dance ability. When you play a Pokemon from your hand to evolve on your Pokemon during a turn, you may use this ability. During your turn, the attacks of your basic Pokemon do 100 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. Um, this is another card that people were really whinging about when it got released because it only it only affected basic Pokemon. And I went on a massive rant about how this affected all Pokemon. It would still only ever be used on basic Pokemon. So it didn't matter that this text was included. Um, but yeah, this is... I think I actually think the ability is really cool. Um, I like kind of going all in on one specific turn. Um, and there is that extra synergy of, you know, those weird situations where... Um, or like the highlight reel moments with something like a jump up or something like that where you can do a massive blowout for one energy with um, the the regular attack on Jumpluff. Uh, maybe that's Jumpluff the way to play it. No, this... Jumpluff isn't a basic. Oh, your basic point. You're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm just thinking, like, straight away, what's the best basic attacker? Zacian. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's a way that Zacian can keep up damage-wise. You can hit, what, 360 now with a sword and this. Yeah. Um, there's also top entry Lombre. Not, uh, don't forget that. So you don't even need to play rare candies in this list. You can try and play no low tads. Oh no, wait, is top entry Lombre rotating? No. Oh, it's still in. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, so you can play Lombres and Ludicolos without candy synergy. And you're, <laughs> if you're playing Zacian, you already want Oranguru. So it's sure. kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for big damage swings. Um, but yeah, any. Any of those synergies, I think, look pretty interesting. I, I, I don't think it's, like, super competitive, of course, because no. you're relying on top entry, which gets crumbed by Marnies and other cards like that. But um, if it comes off, it's obviously big damage, and you're falling back on a Zacian core, which doesn't feel too bad ever. No. But yeah, an interesting ability. And again, I think one of my favourite arts of the set. Look at him. He just looks so happy. And Jack, please show them the Lombre and the Lotad. Sorry, yes, the Lombre is another great art. Please. There he is. And the Lotad. Simple, but effective. Lotad is just there, like, I have no soul. <laughs> he just, he just, I, I feel like this Pokemon just doesn't do anything until it evolves. It just exists. Yeah. And then evolves. It just exists. Uh, right. So, yeah. Another terrible monkey. Soaked Circus is pretty uh, unfortunate. Yes, yes. Chloritza is, again, pretty sad. Ice Q has Block Face that prevents damage uh, from your opponent's basic Pokemon next turn. We have a lot of ways to move this, but, um, you know, we've seen these kind of effects do well in the past, which is pretty cool. Ice Q Art is perfection as well. This is very true. Just using each other. Gone a little, little trip. Uh, but, yeah, a pretty interesting one. Oops. Jigglypuff is the psychic type every ro everybody roll out, so you can now hit uh, Urshies for weakness, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so you've got Urshi and a Turner. Yeah, unfortunately there's no there's no dark no. type one, right? No. So you can't hit that the big three. That would be three. broken, Jack. You can't hit the big three. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Okay, here's, here's another set of cards that are really interesting. Galarian Articuno is the first of the single prize Galarian Birds, Cool Charge. When you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench during your turn, you may attach two Psychic Energy from your hand to it. And then Psycho Laser discards all Psychic Energy from this Pokemon and does 120 to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Uh, so yeah, all three of the Galarian Birds have this kind of ability. Uh, they let you attach energy. Um, I think this is the... Uh, I think this is the middle of the three. I think... Um, 
it's it's a weird one because obviously this is an immediate plus 60 for Calyrex. Uh, and that's not irrelevant. And I think that alone might just about squeak it as a one-off in Calyrex. But you have to think, every bench... Every benched Galarian Articuno isn't a benched Calyrex, so therefore isn't drawing you cards. So this is this is great for winning the game, say, or getting a um, an immediate payoff. But it's not it, it's it's kind of uh, you, you know you're putting all of your eggs into one basket to get a KO because this these two Psychic Energy could be drawing four cards. So you kind of it's kind of you have to kind of risk versus reward it. But I think just having a plus sixty in your deck is pretty good um, yeah. as a one of. So I think it. I think as a an ex- as exclusively as a one of, uh, it could be good in Calyrex. Um, I don't think it's. I mean, it, it could end up being a finisher as well. Like it's an alternative. Yes. To you needing boss for game as well. Yes. You just have a bunch of energy, or you can play energy retrieval quite easily. Yeah, and even just having some sniping in the deck is also good. It gives it. It gives yeah. the uh, deck yeah, another control. layer of being able to attack. Um, so yeah, I think this is definitely an interesting Without one. Creamy reload says Mark. You could try and uh, creamy and then uh, scoop up net them all. Like once you've discarded those cards from Al Creamy and try go and get again them back into play. Yeah. <laughs> you could indeed do that. Combo creamy. You love to see it. But yeah, it's cool that they made them all. Um, they gave them all this ability, and whilst I think a couple of them. Or at least one of them isn't great. Uh, this is a really good ability in general to have, um, and it's the kind of ability that could definitely be broken at some point by something. Just having a like somewhat universal energy acceleration, anyway. So yeah, really cool cards. And these are our uh, pre-release promos as well. So these are going to be oh, super accessible. Much. Great. Uh, so yeah, pretty cool. Wobbuffet has Mirror Page. Choose one of your benched Pokemon. Count the number of damage counters on that Pokemon and put the same number. On your opponent's active Pokemon. Um, again, we've talked about how at the moment we're very much in a meta where you two shot through VMAXs. Uh, so this actually can be a one prize, like 270, uh, which is pretty cool. I think this probably won't ever really pick up huge amounts of hype, but uh, I actually think as a tech card, it's pretty interesting, especially in a closed deck list style meta. Um, you could really cause someone some issues with this but you know right now i think i think it's definitely just more highlight reel than anything yeah uh sigalith is pretty boring it does have the great attack attack joust though joust is uh, fabulous best attack name out there um okay golurk v is a single strike pokemon uh mega punch for mega punch is three for 80 but for four energy psychic psychic Colorless, colorless. We have Rewind Beam, which is 180, and if your opponent's active Pokemon is an evolved Pokemon, remove the highest stage evolution card to devolve it and return that card to the opponent's hand. Um, this, in the past, has been a pretty devastating effect. Typically, it's paired with damage that is quite low, so it can't be crazy, but this does 180 and can be scaled uh, with something like a Single Strike Houndoom or a Karen or something. Uh, and that is pretty scary. It's never going to be taking VMAX prizes, obviously, quite literally, because it can't. But it can take a VMAX KO, essentially, just for one less prize. Um, which is huge, because a lot of the time the prizes don't matter. It's actually the tempo that matters. And this is a great tempo play. It takes off their attacker. It gives them back their evolution. But typically, you're prob- you're doing... Essentially, with this attack, you're doing 340 damage rather than 180 damage. Um at the cost of a prize, which I think in a lot of situations will actually be worth it when you consider uh, having to, you know, attach more energy to get going and stuff like that. So, yeah, I actually think this is a really interesting card. It, I don't know where it lies, though. Like, you're not going to really add a Karen into Shadow Rider because you already need to have, like, three in play for this Golic to be good. Yeah. To, to, like, make it happen in a turn. And if you're playing a single strike box... You still have that too annoying you can't, energy yeah. cost. You can't accelerate the psychics. I so... think it's just slightly too much work. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I like the text though, and I like how high its damage scales because you can see what it's trying to do here. Like you say, it's just like there's the threat, deal with the threat in a turn, yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, but I, I, for that sort of attack cost, 
you'd want it to actually be doing the 300 odd <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> rather than just take the two prizes yeah i think this is one of the best um what do you call it the best devolves we've ever seen though which is worth uh something because like i say yeah. this effect has been interesting in the past Someone said, uh, "Pity impact energy doesn't isn't hand doomable." I think if impact energy was hand doomable, this actually would be really, really good because all of a sudden, across two turns, you can attach any two energy and search for any two energy, and then with three hand doom, you can just get one of these out in a turn. Which and is single strike then could play psychic dark fighting, which would be pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's like a whole thing. Yeah. So yeah, just falls ever so slightly be below the line. Um, I think this is definitely a great. Uh, highlight real card though there's going to be uh some situations where you can like drop a go lurk attach energy and money or something and just be like well i've money you to four cards deal with the go lurk or i'm taking out your vmax which is pretty funny uh pump kaboo has the pumpkin hole ability uh basically only worth noting because it's a bit of a successor to marshadow when you play a spoken from your hand to your bench during your turn you may use the ability to discard any stadium in play it's obviously a lot worse because it can't just sit on the bench uh, like Marshadow can, Marshadow is uh, so much better than this, but at least we do have uh, a, a searchable way of being able to uh, discard energy. It's interesting that it's a psychic type again, so Calyrex loses Marshadow and potentially gains Pump Kaboo for um, being able to have a searchable way to counter Path of the Peak. Uh, but yeah, other than that, it's bas that's basically the only reason to play the card, and I think because it is uh because it can't be just popped on the bench it will only see play in calyrex whereas right now my shadow sees play in everything because you can just put it down and forget about it uh, this has to be searched pro uh, kind of retroactively so yeah uh, my, minor upside compared to Marshadow is that it is nettable but i don't think you're ever making the spaces for that sort of combo <laughs> yeah that's true uh, Monster Parade is on the Gorgeist. Maybe we play it because, well, Gorgeist has. Gorgeist is never going to be worried about stadiums, I guess. Um, <laughs> 60 and reveal the top six cards of your deck. This attack does 60 more damage times the number of psychic Pokemon you find there. You then shuffle the psychic Pokemon into your deck and discard the other cards. So, again, this feels like a. Uh, we saw that Gyarados from back in the day, which did it with energy, uh, but it had a 30 times multiplier. This actually has a 60 times multiplier uh, and a relevant typing so you don't need to hit huge amounts of numbers um again it's another one prize archetype that's probably not really going to go anywhere because of if it being a one prize archetype but uh it's a pretty interesting one and i like that typically you will be getting more and more damage throughout the game the only awkward thing with this i think is the fact that you're going to be discarding your energy unfortunately uh and i feel like energy is going to be super important in this deck because it's a two cost rather than a one cost so yeah I'm just trying to think of what psychic Pokemon you'd actually play. Like, you play a 4 4 Shadow Rider and yeah. probably just try and get one in play to help you parade all the time. Yeah, I think you. I think and you. I don't know what else you play. I think you play exactly <laughs> exactly those. I mean, you need to play more, right? You need to play a ton of psychic Pokemon just for damage. Oh, yeah, true, I guess. So you need, you need to play. To you need to find the next least worst Pokemon behind 4 4 Calyrex. I don't know what those cards are. Galarian Articunos, so you can just forget about the Gorgeist and play Calyrex. <laughs> Ta <-da! laughs> um, Ooh, that's another pump move. Interesting. Where's he going with this? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to look at Hitmonchan for exactly the art because look at this. I think this art is yeah, incredible. That is, that is insane. Um, I like that they're giving a lot of these fighting types um, a chance to shine with all of these battle styles cards as well. Mm. Galarian Zapdos has Charge which is essentially the same ability but for fighting energy I think this is the worst one because we have no uh, real big payoff for having lots of fighting energy on board that I can remember um, no, I so yeah I, it's, it's you know there's Galarian Farfetch'd Galarian Farfetch'd is or Surfetch'd whichever one it is yeah. yeah is a card and actually does synergize fairly well with this card <laughs> but uh yeah and thunderous kick um again leaves them paralyzed guaranteed paralysis but right now guaranteed paralysis is pretty weak just because we have so many switching outs in our decks so yeah i think uh it's kind of cool to try and like scoop up that loop this though in, in an attempt to chain paralysis but you're sacrificing too many prizes along the way probably <laughs> yeah true energy switch time yeah obviously all of these have energy switch synergy as well um i think the moltres actually has the most energy switch synergy 
Um, yeah. But yeah, keep in mind that all of these types now have acceleration plus energy switch synergy if needs be. And we could play a psychic fighting dark deck with all three of these birds and just hope to play like four energy retrievals to try and like <laughs> put them down in the right spot. Yeah. Which would be fun. Um, Harry Emma has Guts, but again, Guts has never been amazing, especially when paired with a pretty poor attack, uh, unfortunately. Look at him go, Jack. Again, oh. a great art, though. God, look at Absolutely him go. He's slamming the ground right there. <laughs> that is genius. Uh, Lycanroc V has a 40 damage for 1 and 200 for 3. 200 for 3 is actually, uh, you know, getting into the range of killing Vs, so that's uh, not terrible. Lycanroc VMAX, however, has for one energy Hunting Claw. Choose one of your opponent's Pokemon in play with 60 HP or less. That Pokemon is knocked out. Again, there's not. It feels like there's a lot of ways to punish uh, Pokemon with low amounts of HP right now, and I think Lycanroc is actually probably one of the worst ones because it's an evolution. Um, but it is only one energy, so you can. It's kind of like a quote unquote snipe. Um, you know, I've seen people talking about. I, I can see someone talking right now about Claydol with this, uh, but the thing is, like that's super slow. That's two stage ones that neither of which draw cards, and is three energy across the uh, across the turn. So yeah, it's really unfortunate that I think Lycanroc just isn't good enough. Um, I, mean, I kind of like how much we are leading into like Sobble engines and Cincino engines. So like you just go first with this deck and you guarantee a prize as soon as you evolve up, which is kind of okay. Your type covering is okay um but the damage output in general is quite low I i'm not thinking of hunting claw as being like a Build let's around. finish off a v max thing no unless we go the intellion route with this and try and do max edges plus 30 pokes and 20 pokes all over the place and then uh hunting claw means you don't need boss for game which is kind of an interesting prospect mm. um so they will have an interesting prize route actually because if if your opponent is playing some one prize engines um and you do go first, you're pretty much always taking that free one prize, like Mareeps and stuff as well, where you just point at that and yeah. knock it out straight away. And then you're looking <laughs> to knock out one VMAX and one, you. uh, like Evolving V or something, which you can max edge into and hunting yeah. claw sort of thing. So it's actually kind of interesting. I don't think it's that bad. I don't think it's great though. And obviously, Urshifu makes it look a lot worse because mm. you're directly comparing the two. This is weak to Graz, which I think is kind of interesting as well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I can see it. I think Hunting Claw has some great utility. Yeah, I hadn't thought of the uh, Sobble's plays, to be fair. Interesting. Yeah. Alrighty. Galarian Moltres has Dark Charge, which again is uh, the dark equivalent of the other two birds. I think this is the one that has the most energy switch utility, just because... Um, we're already playing e switches in Eternatus anyway, but this can be a great one prize attacker. So this can be if you can't find your um, your Galarian Moltres V's, you have another way of accelerating energy and e switching off now. But also this attack, I think, is really really strong. Um, three for well, essentially because this comes into play with two energy. Uh, this is essentially for one energy, twenty plus fifty for each uh, damage for each prize card your opponent has taken. Again, it's probably not going to be taking a KO, but it's a fantastic one prize Pokemon that's going to do, you know, a big maybe 220 even, uh, just to try and take an extra three prizes on something they've already poked or, uh, you know, boss up a two prize Pokemon on the bench or something like that. So, yeah, it's not even like the attack is bad as well. Um, I think this is the best of the three, to be honest. Interesting. So, I, I think Articuno is definitely the best of the three because I think it's a hard sell to actually get enough energy in hand in a Eternatus deck to make your spell. That's true. Right? That's true. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. you play like a maximum of like 10 energy. Mm. And the thing, do you really want to make spaces just for more basic energy in Eterna just for this? I don't know if you do. The way I see this, yeah. The way the only way I see this though is obviously I, I did just say the attack is great and I do think it is, but it's just another way of energy accelerating. Like, yeah. I think Even this if is. It gets the one use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think in a lot of situations you will just proc it for one because it's also a plus 30 damage. That's true. Um, but yeah, I, I think, think... I think you'll see the Articuno more like... Like, that yeah. goes into Cali for It me. feels like Articuno... Just, yeah, Articuno, Articuno is a one-of in probably every Cali deck, whereas this will be maybe a two-of in specific Eternatus decks that really try and lean into the E-Switch. Yeah. 
but outside of it you won't see mm-hmm. um but i definitely want to try out a, a quad or like the the trio of galarian birds and play a ridiculous energy count and energy retrievals play the type coverage game and then fiery wrath in general is just good late game attack yeah so i think that could be like a really fun out the box kind of meme one prize deck definitely uh, Absol's pretty poor. We've got another Krogunk, which obviously we have to take a look at. Great art, and similarly, I think the, Kro- the Toxicroak has great art as well. I had a look at this earlier on. Moltres in Dark Box 2. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of the Dark true. Box pieces are rotating, but for a couple of weeks, you can actually bung a load of energy, which is cool. Garbodor V has Trash Cycle, which is 40, and your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused and can't retreat. Uh, again, we have so many Switch right now. This is basically like Paralysis. Um, it's not going to be overly important. And yeah. Slosure Bomb does 130. Again, just before I go on to the VMAX, brilliant art, I think. It's just... <laughs> I really, really like some of the new arts on the Vs. Um, Golden cool over the place. <laughs> Garbodor VMAX has the ability Trash Hoarding. This Pokemon can have up to two Pokemon tools attached to it. And if this ability stops working, discard tools until uh, there's only one tool left. Um, obviously, we have a fair few good tools right now. You can attach multiple different gloves to this to be able to do some extra damage. I think one of the biggest ones for me is Imposing Helmet. Um, Double Helmet. Double Helmet feels very, very uh, annoying to deal with. One Helmet you can kind of deal with. You kind of have to get supplementary supplementary hammers with it to be annoying. But two Helmets um, can actually stop someone attacking for a turn, which is pretty crazy. Um... Unfortunately, Garbodor's attack is very, very poor, so uh, it's not going to go anywhere. G-Max Stink does 120, and your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned and can't retreat. Again, really not going to be uh, a big issue. They can just retreat. They can just switch out of this in most scenarios. But um, yeah, it's it's a shame because it would have been interesting to see. Uh, this ability do well. Uh, we've seen decks with multiple tools attached do well in the past. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, the attack is just really, really bad. Yep, very poor. And you're not going to have space for like all the Toxicroak stuff as well as like seven tools, as well as like <laughs> Dust Island or some random nonsense. So yeah, yeah. Uh, you can't do everything it wants to do all in one 60 card deck. Unfortunately, so either you're doing terrible damage or you're not getting the value of trash hoarding. Mm. Uh, Thievul has the ability Fumble Hand when you play this Pokemon to evolve one of your Pokemon you may have each player shuffle their hand put it to the bottom and then draw four so this is Marnie on or slightly worse Marnie for you on an ability Um, again it's a stage one that's too much utility for it to ever really be worth uh, seeing play Uh, but it is at least some kind of like disruption which is worth noting I don't think this is ever really going to go anywhere though The the only thing I can think is some kind of like Again, Sander esque one prize deck that uh, yeah. this is a one one line that when People he wants to be something. Yeah, yeah he wants he wants to be uh, using a supporter other than Marnie but also needs some disruption. So yeah, Sander, I think this one is if it's going to be for anyone, it's probably going to be for you. Yeah. Uh, Berserker is pretty bad. Skarmory is also pretty bad. Again, great art though. Just take a quick peek at this zooming yeah. through the air. Uh, Klefki pretty bad Qfan again great art Copperaja <laughs> great art but all of these cards are quite poor Ooh. Altaria has Luring Search when during a turn you may search your deck for a supporter and put it on top of your deck um, in combination with uh, Guru this is basically search your deck for a supporter per turn which is a very strong effect but obviously that's two bench slots um, and right now we have a lot of bench taken up with things uh, like Crobats to Denes, uh, that kind of stuff. So it's got to be better than that. If you really are not wanting to play these two prize Pokemon, I actually don't hate Altaria and uh, Guru as some kind of engine. It's actually pretty interesting as a completely one prize engine. I don't think it'll overtake engines in general, but I don't like. I actually don't think it's bad, so to speak. Yeah, and it could be a 1-1 one, one in Cincino as well, just because it's already level ballable as well. It's a natural free retreater, yeah. which has some upside. I think the card... It's very good for controlling decks as well, just in general. I think the gate, the thing that gate, gate keeps this card the most is just the fact that we still don't have Ditto Prism back. Like, this kind of... This yeah. is such a perfect Ditto Prism card, right? 
for sure. Uh, which sucks. Uh, Dialga stops. Super interesting ability. I, I think this ability yeah. is actually cracked, and it's great for Cube as well. Makes Altaria more interesting. It's a great ability. It's just yeah, like you say, whether it, whether we can justify playing it in instead of things like uh, Crobat and Eldegoss and that kind of stuff. I think the any though, like in, in an Urshi Sino kind of thing. I know half the time you're digging for like. You're actually digging for support. Cheryl right or... Turn, right? You're yeah, digging yeah, for yeah. Cheryl, you're digging for boss. Bird so it's like boss, yeah. If you put a 1-1 one, one Altaria into your Urshisino, it feels like a lot of value to yeah. me. Because it actually has natural free retreat as well, so it just means you can play like switches and ropes a lot easier. Yeah. Interesting. Something. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Dialga has Chrono Wind that lets you uh, stop your opponent's Pokemon V playing or using any attacks next turn. Um, but again, we have so many switching cards that unfortunately this text is... Almost irrelevant, I think, in a lot of cases. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Hydreigon is another stage two dragon that's been done pretty dirty. Uh, dragon counted as 20 plus 100 for each prize card your opponent took on their previous turn, which is great if they take three prizes. Um, other than that, it's really bad, which is quite unfortunate. And we're playing a stage two with, again, a split energy cost, which is not ideal. Eno is the, is the buff to... Um... What's it called though? Uh, Rain Dance Hydrogen. Just saying. Ah, very good, very good. Yeah. Uh, Kiram has Extreme Freeze, uh, which does sixty damage times the number of water energy you discard from your Pokemon. Uh, this is actually a really interesting one in terms of being able to like water is probably becoming one of the best energy we can accelerate w because of things like Melanie and Frostmoth. Um, outside of like I think exactly Shadow Rider it's probably one of the best accelerators or water's probably got the most acceleration right now so this actually can do numbers um, especially as we can attach to this um, like kind of passively whilst we're you know melanieing to things like an Ice Rider or whatever but again the spit energy cost is always going to be the downside of these cards which is unfortunate yep and even with is it Olivia the, the girl that gets all the energies back is it Olivia what, who am I thinking of it gets all the water energies back. Nessa. Nessa. No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nessa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even with Nessa, it's not getting enough energy back for good damage. Mm. Um, Neuvern has a Boom Burst for a Psychic that does 20 to everything. Uh, again, not really a huge amount of damage these days. Um, Synchro Loud does Psychic for a Psychic and Dark does 60 and uh, 120 more if you have if you match your hand size with your opponent uh two for 180 on a two prize pokemon actually isn't terrible but again this awkward uh, energy split kind of really gatekeeps this while we don't have something like a double dragon in play i don't think any of the either of these types are accelerate can be accelerated to a dragon type outside of like e-switch right so pretty unfortunate there uh drampa has berserk which is funny but unfortunately again the they've given it a terrible energy cost um but a nice little uh, nod to the old very very good Drampa um, yeah. again with brilliant art look at, look at I don't look even at know that. what he's doing I don't know where to he's... look yeah yeah I incredible just, I, lo I love his attack I don't know what's going on but I'm, in I'm interested interested uh, Duraldon V we've mentioned it a couple of times here we're finally getting to it um, Fighting Metal does 70 this is one of the only Pokemon that actually isn't kind of capped by this uh, cost because of uh, Bronzong. I think this is Bronzong is basically the only way you can play Duraludon. I can't think of uh, a particularly nice way of playing it outside of Bronzong because we have no I mean, acceleration. You could, you could play Houndoom and uh, Saucer, right? Because you'll just play a different Duraludon to this V. You'll play. I guess you can evolve. V. Yeah, you can evolve into the other one. Yeah, you can yeah. evolve. You yeah. Source okay. the basic and then evolve up. Yeah. I think this Duraludon is basically irrelevant because we'll play the other one. Potentially, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess, yeah, yeah. It's pro it probably is almost all as well. The other one can even attach to itself, can't it? It does like one for thirty and attach. Uh, I thought it had an ability. There's a couple of the. Oh yeah, okay. So there's one that has hard coat, so it's basically a two fifty hit point Pokemon. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, that is the only one. I'm thinking of the regular. The baby one, one yeah. Uh, and it just does ten plus forty for each metal energy attached to itself, and mm. for three colorless. Might even be worth, in all fairness, might even end up playing that one in the Bronzong build anyway, just because you can. 
that that Big has unlimited damage count. Gatling slug. Slug. Yeah. Um, the big payoff card is the Duraldon VMAX. Has the ability Skyscraper. Prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from each of your opponent's Pokemon that has any special energy attached to it. Uh, we've mentioned there's not huge amounts of special energy out there right now, but having this ability is never really going to be a bad thing. You'll actively, like, it's not a downside for you ever, and you're going to be disrupting uh, opponents to some extent. Uh, so yeah, really nice having some kind of immunity, especially given that uh, Duraldon is meant to be like. I feel like we've got the big tanky Duraldon and then like the hyper aggressive Ray. So yeah, pretty cool ability to have. And then G Max Pulverization for <laughs> fighting and two metal does two twenty and goes through all effects. So it's Shred, which is really good because um, two twenty plus one Rapid Strike energy, not Rapid Strike, single Strike energy goes through Zamazenta, so you're never actually worried about Zam with this deck, which is cool. One of the biggest things uh, about VMAXs right now is they're countered by Zam. Similarly with like a Decidueye as well, which is pretty cool. Um, doesn't have massive output. Uh, it's a, like a clean two-shot, which is good. This is kind of the exact number you want to be if you're not one-shot. One shotting A clean two-shot is really good. Um, obviously, we've seen multiple ways that you can get up to 300 with this, with this deck. You can play the uh, ability... Not the, the ability, the tool, the scroll. So if you do need that big blowout 300, you can do it. You can kind of G-Max Pulverization twice, probably because this guy's almost certainly tanking a hit. And then go for, on the second Duraludon V-Max, go for um, that big attack. Or even just another, any like single strike Pokemon. Um, so yeah, it's actually a pretty interesting one. I think it's definitely in Ray's Shadow, but I don't think it's by, in, by any means bad. Yeah, and I think the thing that Bronzong has been searching for this whole time is a VMAX that always tanks, and having no weakness is obviously huge for the basis of a tanking archetype, which I think mm -hmm. is great. Um, and yeah, I think the more I'm thinking about that scroll, the more I'm thinking of it as a late-game payoff. I don't know how much space we actually have for someone like that, but um, I don't know if we'll get baited again by a Bronzong package with this, because Corviknight felt like a very good card, and it just did nothing. Mm -hmm. Um so I can see this being too much work at the end of the day. Um, but its ability is annoying. It, having no weakness is super good. And you have good search ability for Bronzor and um, Duraludon now from the stadium, yeah. which is really nice. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot to actually like here, more than previous Bronzong builds we've had to work with. Mm. Um, so yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Again, I think it's definitely in Ray's Shadow, but I don't think it's bad. It's definitely an mm -hmm. interesting one. Um, best artwork of the set here. Slack off. Look at that. Yes, this is by far the best artwork of the set. Just hanging around. Great, great artwork this is. Uh, the slacking actually has a pretty interesting attack. Uh, My Way says that if there's a stadium card in play, this Pokemon can't attack. So, uh, obviously, you want to be playing lots of ways to bin off stadiums. And then, uh, I don't know what the attack's called. They're, they've given no name, but the attack does 120 and 30 more for each of your opponent's benched Pokemon. Uh, this actually can reach uh, one shot on VMAXs, which is pretty funny. Obviously, they can control it. But um, because this is like this is a chunky stage one, uh, stage two Pokemon uh, with a fairly high damage cap, uh, again, it's, it's actually not the worst thing we've seen. But unfortunately as ever, capped by being a stage 2. Um, what What is that ability? Why would you give an ability to a stage 2 already to make it even worse? I mean, come on. It's not fair, is it? That is not fair. I've done all this work to rare candy up, and you're still making me do things. <laughs> that is embarrassing. And finally, just to complete the package, we have another everybody rollout Pokemon in Wulu, of course, because... Uh, Nice big round fluff ball. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the sets. I think they're both really interesting. I don't think they're quite... It's weird. I don't think they're quite as impactful as Chilling Rain and Battle Styles, but I think the Poster Boys are still as impactful. But I don't think they have as wide-reaching wide effects as the previous two sets did. Um, but yeah, Ray, for sure, is going to be very, very good. And um, Duraldon seems pretty cool as well as... Some cool utility Pokemon here and there, like the Galarian birds. Um, so yeah, really interesting sets though, as per usual. Um, again, like I say, personally not quite as impactful as the previous two, but still 
uh, very yeah. excited too. I mean, what, once we mush it together with EVs, I think you'll feel a lot of there'll be a lot of change in the format. Yes. I think. And again, um, this set is the one that's going to be tied with rotation as well. So yeah, things are going to feel very to be different. Fair, like Urshifu is getting a little peppering with Medicham. Um, Shadow Rider's getting Shadow Rider's getting a bit of peppering from Articuno. Potentially yeah. a Cake Kuno deck could be a thing as well. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a few things here. A few yeah, things it's by no means by no means a bad set, of course. Um, and Rayquaza is just going to come out and enter the format towards yeah. the top tier straight away, probably. For sure. But yeah, really exciting stuff. Um, I'm, I'm, I mean, we're still only just ankle deep in the Chilling Rain meta right now, but I'm already looking forward to kind of seeing uh, where we can take some of these archetypes. But we have a few more weeks before we're going to be jumping into that stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's it's been it's been fun. I think we're going to head off, call it an early one. I mean, we've been here for nearly two hours anyway, but um, <laughs> an it, early one. It always yeah. happens. Uh, but yeah, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Hopefully, you enjoyed our thoughts on the one prize well, on the new not just the one prize the new stuff here and there um, let's see who's about to raid is anyone out to raid? Azul's on uh, Azul it is then thanks for tuning in everyone um, make sure you go and drop some of that's OPs in Azul's chat and uh, <laughs> make sure you stick around with the YouTube we'll be uploading over the next few weeks lots more chilling rain stuff here and there but yeah cheers for tuning in everyone bye